peace everyone if you're new to my channel welcome i'm nubian and for those of you who are returning what's up y'all welcome to another beautiful ass magical ass moment in time oh divine masculine how are you this specific message has been inspired by my beloved who many of you know as professor sadat muhammad who has transited on into his destined date with destiny and my walk with God so let's go right in and um, let's dive in on this specific message and allow God to channel through me what it is that he is trying to deliver to you dearly divine masculine so God may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart may the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight because you are my God my redeemer amen so I remember a time where I was ready to transcend on myself in a place when I reached out to God and I knew the relationship I was in at the time no longer made me happy, it wasn't healthy and it was not something that I wanted to teach my daughters. So I made a decision to seek God. And when I sought out my ancestors, my wayshores, my guides, they pointed me towards God. But they also told me to go on a fast. So I went on a fast with my daughters. For 21 days we went on this fast. And it was a Daniel's fast, but we wanted answers because I was being tethered back and forth between two different relationships with a soulmate and a false twin flame. And at the time I didn't know it, but when I went to a shaman, I was told that magic was being used on me back and forth between these relationships. So that's why I felt a pull back and forth with the two. However, I was in this space where I sought out spirit and spirit specifically told me to leave my soulmate, who is Professor Muhammad. So when I shared this, because I, I knew I was so broken because that was my boy, that was my buddy, that was my friend. I knew I can depend on him for anything. Like, y'all have no clue. Just talk about Road Dog. Talk about Bonnie and Clyde. That was my boy. Known. We were known throughout the court system. Let's just put it like that. After they came after me with the Jakia Ford story, it didn't matter because they wouldn't even let me speak on my case. But he flew in from Chicago to Montana every 10 days every 10 days just to make sure that I would have a voice in court and when spirit told me to leave him and I told him what spirit said he said F spirit and I knew right then and there that I had to truly get away from him and one day one of the seniors one of the elders I helped him with some paperwork and he was very grateful for it. So he was calling me up to thank me for it, but he overheard my ex going off on me in the background, just yelling, just trying to mess up any business that I could possibly get that would give me the finances to get away from him because at this point it was just beyond unnecessary to be in the relationship. So the elder, our elder heard him go off on me and then he called me back later on and he was like Nubian I know this is none of my business but I own this apartment building 
I'm about to move downstairs because I remodeled it and you and the girls can come upstairs and y'all can just stay there for six months for free. But we stayed there six months for free, no income, no nothing, didn't know what the hell we were going to do. But we trusted God. And that's how we ended up in our sky riser. But this takes me back to when my ex cursed the spirit. Because spirit knew that I was, I outgrew him. What I was supposed to learn at the time that I was with him, I learned that. But when it was time for me to go on into my destiny, on into my journey, he began to suppress me and wanted to own me for himself, even told me that he owns me. And that's when I was like, oh, it's really time to go. So there's more to that story, of course, but those are just some little clips from it. And in all respect, no disrespect because that's still my friend one thing I'll say about Professor Muhammad is he 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 would go off on me in these specific spaces but I went off on him as well in specific spaces but we we're both growing and so many of you out there can relate to this because you're also growing he would always uplift me when it came to any type of community work we did with the black community because we were boots on the ground and those of you out there who know us know of this. We ran master organizations together and are known for that. So it was a shock to everyone when it was time for us to go our separate way because I outgrew the relationship and instead of everyone looking at it from a perspective of okay you know they're moving on they're still friends the first thing that I heard people say was oh you still talk to him I heard y'all broke up well that does not mean that we're not still friends I feel like I'm going into this is really interesting that I've been going into this personal side of my own personal story here but I feel that it's important for me to share this because I feel that there is someone out there who needs to hear a message of relatability. That was my best friend. And I don't care what anyone said about him or says about him. Oh, no. You're saying it about me. Because he was there for me when no one dared to be there for me. When my ancestors gave me the intel that my family bloodline owned all them acreages of land, oh, my own family, blood family ran for me. When Professor Muhammad Boots on the Ground was right there, in the face, facing the Bema Seat, right along with the lion's den, right along with the devil's chamber, I walked behind them gates. I know what's back there. I don't perpetrate the front because I am the front. There is no need for me to any longer be in this space of feeling as if I cannot tell my truth from a space of someone out there relating to me. Now, Divine Masculine, I'm saying this to you to say this. I had to tell you my story of relatability because there's someone out there that you did not let go. And there's someone out there that you curse the spirit for. Because you love this person so much. Because whatever you felt about yourself in your life, this was your trophy. This was your escape. This was your family. This was your God. This was your goddess. This was your way of being angry at the spirit, but yet at the same time angry at yourself because when you had what it is that the spirit of God has given you, you didn't appreciate it when it was around. You did at one point and you had your memories with that, but then after a while you became comfortable. And when you got too comfortable, what it is that you help mold and propel on into greatness for God 
You wanted to hold it for yourself. You wanted to keep it for yourself, but it wasn't yours. It was alone, just like our family, just like our bloodline, just like our children, just like our friends, just like our money in our bank account. It's temporary. It's alone. But what proper investments have you made in those specific connections, those specific relationships? This is why we are to cherish even friendships or business partnerships or relationships with people because you never know who you meet. This is why you don't treat people any old kind of way because you never know what they become. Or you never know if it's the last time that you'll ever see them again. That's one thing that I will say about me is every single time I have an interaction with a person, I always treat them as if it was me. How would I want someone to treat me? Therefore, if any ill will was said about me, I always knew it was false because I always knew that all my work, I was doing it unto the Lord. Always know that God is always watching you. All your steps, all your moves and everything comes back to you. But nothing is worth hurting someone else because when you hurt someone else, you're hurting yourself. When my soulmate cursed the spirit. I knew what he did. Shortly after that, I began to see him wither away into this world where he was just, he didn't care about what he ate. He was bitter, he was angry, he was mean. He compared every single woman to me. He did everything in his power to get me back but even in that space I saw his weakness I saw his pain and I knew that I couldn't go back because if I went back it was either me or him I knew that if I went back it was just a matter of time before I was dead because he wanted me that much that he didn't want anyone else to have me and he became a danger to me and my children I know that love is deep but when it gets to the point of where you see them signs like that it's time to go you are always, he will always be my friend. He will always be my love. He will always be my heart. But at the same time, I feel like when it comes to the indigenous race, we don't know how to see unhealthy patterns that have been instilled in us from our family or our bloodline. And then here it is, you go tell your family your side of the story and you and then a lot of us try to force ourselves into relationships that are not healthy for us and at the same time you're wondering why that family don't like you that family don't like you because you, now they feel like you're exposed to their trauma you know all their family mess and their family drama that they have yet to tap in and they have yet to heal from but it's easier for them to look at you and to blame you for how you have treated their brother without knowing behind the scenes what the true, true corporate of the damage was, the narcissist type of behavior and the energy that has been projected on one from another. But that's neither here nor there. I feel very strongly the reason I'm sharing this is because a lot of you divine masculines mistreated the same exact woman that you're crying over, you mistreated that woman. And that was the only woman that really put up with your mess. That was the only woman that really stayed silent about it and put up with it for so long. But some way, somehow you killed her in it. Some way, somehow you took out the anger that you felt about your mother on her. You embarrassed her. You talked about her to your friends. You cheated on her. Many of you committed adultery, fornication, or whatever you want to call it. I'm not the judge, I'm just the messenger. But when you hurt her, and because she passed on, or for many of you, she just left you, she left you with that pain. And the pain was, is that you wanted to fix it. But it was too late because, na 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 When a woman's truly fed up, she's gone. 
I don't know what it is about y'all masculines, but when you have what it is that is right there in front of your eyes, you miss it because you're so busy looking at the past and the woulda, shoulda, couldas and, and wanting to fix it so bad, but then because you can't fix it, it's out of your hand, you keep yourself in the space of anger and you keep yourself in the space of pain and then you curse the spirit and cursing the spirit don't do you any good because all it does is make you sick all the way even to your own demise. But in the process, you're living in a space of anger and bitterness and pain. But yet you don't even see the true gifts of God that's right before your very eyes. And what it is that you truly have in your own divine feminine. Because all it is, is the one that you have hurt reincarnated again in her higher self. But from a space of now you can do it right and you don't even see it. Because you're so busy wanting to fix the past versus healing from the past and forgiving yourself for the past and letting it go and taking the opportunity to do it right and to do it right again and to do it this time under the grace of God. Asking God to order your steps. Many people ask, why didn't I release the book yet? Satan and God are twin flames. Because God has not allowed me to release that book yet. When I release that book, that book is going to shake the entire Twin Flame community, the entire kingdom ministry, couple ministry all together because it's going to take people through such timelines of themselves, through generational barriers that I know is going to heal on such a massive scale that I am humbled to release it when God tells me to. It's almost done. It is, but God keeps having me add these inserts where I'm allowed to see things through generational bloodlines and timelines that he's given us a chance to heal from. That is my gift, to tap into things that has kept us bounded and wounded, and even our parents bounded and wounded throughout generational curses and trauma. Divine Masculine, you have been mean to that woman. You've been mean to your Divine Feminine. Unnecessarily. Think about it. She's always making you happy. She's always seeing if you're good. I know you see if she's good too. But you feel like maybe your good is from a space of material goods. But from her space is like the space of things that, you know, are unique. Things that time cannot erase. Things that money cannot buy. It's so simple with her. You have to keep up the momentum with her. She is someone who gives you a run for your money, but at the same time, she is someone who is here to not only help you heal, but help remind you that the things that you did to the karmic, the past person who was your karma to heal, the, your karmic relationship with the other woman was a relationship of the past. So many of you don't like to talk about the past well, or past lives. That was a past life. Now you're in the present life to fix things right with your divine feminine and God has given you opportunity, but you're finding yourself in the space of cursing the spirit so much to where you're like on this hamster wheel and it's like you're frustrating yourself because you can't fix it. You may get these spaces of these breaks, but that's only because God is allowing you to see what it is that you're doing. But if you're going to stay in this space of stubbornness, then what can God do? At home autonomy by the grace of God we're all allowed to see right now in this hour what has happened to our mamas our daddies our generations our grandmas why didn't they get it right now we have the chance to get it right and only a fool would hear this message and ignore the probable cause and the tools of what it takes to heal and to cure and to transcend time and distance of unmutable, undiscoverable birthright trauma in order to take it on to heal it. So therefore we can truly give our children what it is that we are supposed to give them once we're gone. Birthright opportunities, birthright abilities, and the ability and the knowing and the power to be back by our family name which is backed by our bloodline and the royalty thereof, not embarrassment. There's nothing embarrassing about royal bloodline. There's nothing embarrassing at all 
about a family who is so royal that their royalty is backed by the powers of the kingdom of heaven? Who can say that authentically? And have God truly say on that day, well done, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Divine masculine, you have a chance here to continue to curse God or to finally face the things within yourself that you've actually been cursing your own self with that are being used against you from your own words you're in a cycle you're in a dispensation here but it's time for you to get it it's time for you to come off this hamster wheel it's time for you to heal the past by fixing them now because tomorrow's not promised once it's erased and if it wasn't for me talking about my ex his memory i'm pretty sure even with many has been long forgotten even though these are people in our heart that we will always remember, we will always love. And, and for many of you, you may have not lost your beloved one to death. But it feels like it if they're here on earth still. And you know that what my words were just now are relatable. I'm pretty sure that you have your divine feminine around you right now. And because of how you long for the other woman or the other relationship or wanting that so bad and you know you can never have it again you put your divine feminine in the space of making her feel as if she wished that she can take place of the other woman but yet she know it's not fair to her if she did that with her life and her kids and her calling and her path she's done that for you before in the path now it's her time it's her time to live and I feel strongly in my heart that God is going to allow her to do just that with or without you but I feel that you're in this hour of accountability because you continue to curse the spirit and one thing I know about anybody who curses the spirit it's not long after that that you're gone and I feel that there's someone in your life that God has brought along to give you life to give you a chance to live. Are you going to choose that life? The life that that feminine is bringing you, are you going to choose that life? And for many of you, it just may be moving with her. It may be jumping states, it may, whatever it is, whatever it is to take that leap of faith with her, it just may be that. But who are we to choose when it comes to making sacrifices for the kingdom? I've been talking about this. Many people are looking for the second exodus, but I feel very strongly that it's spiritually happening now. It spiritually has already happened for many. Many of y'all don't even see it. The Father says that I come that you might have life and that more, much more abundantly. It also says that he who seeks to find his life shall lose it, and he who seeks to, to lose his life shall gain it. And I feel that so many has run after the jab specifically to try to find their life or to save their life, but God says, you're going to lose it, and that's how I know that there's something really wrong with that. And with me, I don't even care what's going on, not that I'm in this suicidal manner and don't care about living, but I know that to be absent with the body is to be present with my Father. But at this point... I have to choose to do right because no one else is volunteering to go to hell for me and I'm not going there so in the meantime I must live and if my living is by giving you all these messages and putting together packages that God has given me and my talents and my gifts to monetize that to help sustain me so therefore I can continue to give you messages like this then so be it Well, that's the message I have for you. Some of y'all cursing God. God has brought something or someone along to give you life. But yet you've been rejecting it by trying to compare that thing to the past thing that God may have given you in the past. But there's something new here now that God has given you. But you've been rebuking it. You've been rejecting it. You've been very angry and bitter towards it. And for many of you, I promise you, you're not going to know what it is that you have received and that you have gotten until it's gone. 
And that's the same exact thing that happened with that past relationship. You didn't realize how precious it was until it was completely gone. And now it's gone and you have the opportunity to do it right this time. But yet many of you have volunteered to keep yourself suspended in the past. You have made promises to family and friends and loved ones. You've made vows to your family to stay in a space of sadness versus move forward in the promises of God and the happiness and the stillness and love of God. You made promises to that more than making a vow to yourself that you're going to speak to the valley of the dry bones within you and you're going to come alive and you're going to live and you're going to stop cursing the spirit because you may not have tomorrow and if you go to hell after hearing this message even tonight that would be crazy torment to hear my voice on top of knowing that I came to warn you to give you this message, but yet you still continue to rebuke it. For many of y'all, the choice is marriage. People don't have to know that y'all are marriage. Many of y'all are gonna be in kingdom marriages anyways, where you are going to elope. And you're gonna keep that to yourself for the sake of protecting your family bloodline until you germinate that and to that in which God wants you to be, and then God will let both of y'all know when to let everybody know that y'all went ahead and y'all tied the knot. These are different times than our forefathers. I feel that these are times where the people of God are making different moves, but in the way that God tells them to, not in the way of man's format, but in the ways of God for the edification of the kingdom of God. But divine masculine, I'm here in the spirit of God say to you today, Stop cursing the spirit.